Hello, this lecture will cover pages 38 through 44 of my lecture notes. Please print those notes out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on describing logic circuits, Boolean algebra, and logic gates, part A. Starting on page 38 of our lecture notes, describing logic circuits, chapter 3, um, there's a different way of representing logic levels. Um, logic level zeros can be represented with a as a, as a false condition and the logic level one would be true. Um, logic level zero could be off, switch B and off. Logic level one could be the switch B and on. Um, logic level zero could be something being low. Logic level one could be something being high. Z, uh, no for a low, yes for a high. And even go down through here, uh, a lot of times uh, an open switch will represent a logic level zero. A closed switch will be a logic level one or, or conversely, a closed switch could be a logic level zero, and an open switch could be a logic level one. Clockwise flux in a core, in a ferrite core, could be a logic level zero, and a counterclockwise flux could represent a logic one. And in terms of voltages, I picked two voltages. RS-232 years ago, a logic level zero was a minus 15 volts DC, and logic level one was plus 15 volts. What we're going to work with more specifically this semester is zero volts DC representing a logic level zero and five volts DC representing a logic level one. Combinational logic and logic gate definitions. What do we mean what do we mean by combinational logic? Combinational logic is a type of logic circuit that produces an output either a zero or one which is a function of the present inputs after a propagation delay. So what I'm talking about there is let's say that we have a particular gate. I'm just going to, we don't, know, we don't know what we mean by gates yet, but there's a gate. And we have two signals coming in, and they're the inputs, and here's an output. Signal goes in that direction, and here's your output. We're going to set up a, a zero, 0, here. We're going to set up a zero, 1 there. We're going to set up a 1, 0 here. We're going to set up a 1, 1 on these inputs. And after a certain period of delay, an output's going to be produced, either a 0 or a 1, one of the two based on the inputs. This time it takes for these signals to travel through the circuit is called propagation delay. That's what we mean. Combinational logic circuit, there's no switching going on. There's no synchronization. You set up the inputs, you wait for some time, and you get the outputs. That's called combinational logic. That's the first semester, first half of this semester. Logic gates. What do we mean by logic gate? We're going to talk about eight of them in the next the next three lectures. Logic gates are logic circuits, usually small scale integration. We talked about that in the first lecture. With one output and one or more inputs. The output occurs only for certain combinations of input signals. This is a gate. This is some type of gate here. We don't know what type of gate that would represent because we have to talk about how we define the outputs in terms of the inputs. If you look next on page number 39, we're going to talk about introduction to gates. We'll discuss eight different types of logic gates, and that's all there is. That's all there is to discuss in digital d design. There's either an inverter, sometimes referred to as a NOT gate. There's the OR gate. There's the AND gate. There's the NOR gate. There's the NAND gate. There's a buffer gate. There's an exclusive OR gate, and there's an exclusive NOR gate. This lecture is just going to talk about the inverter or the NOT gate and set up what we call a truth table, set up different ways of drawing a particular gate, and then the next lecture we'll talk about OR, AND, NOR, and NAND, and we'll progress through these eight. We'll also work with uh, Boolean algebra theorems and laws to not only represent logic expressions, but to help simplify the circuit. So we're going to want to simplify the circuits once we design them. Because one student's going to design a circuit, and his circuit's going to work. The second circuit's going to the second student's going to design a circuit, and it's going to work too. But the, the number one rule is: Does the circuit do what the specification says for it to do? But the, right after that comes which which person designed with the fewest gates? Because if you use fewer gates and you simplify your expression, it's less expensive to build, it uses less power to operate, 
and it's easier for the technician to troubleshoot. So Boolean algebra is a technique that we're going to use to simplify these logic expressions. Boolean algebra is a mathematical tool that allows the relationship of a logic circuit outputs to be described with literals that define the outputs as an algebraic equation. These literals are allowed to have only two values, a 0 or a 1. If you take a look here on page 40, these are the Boolean theorems we're going to be working with. This is, each one of these pertain to different types of gates. Um, we'll go through these over the next two or three lectures and you'll get to know them very well and I'll describe how these operate. You'll use these theorems and laws to simplify Boolean expressions for the reasons I just covered. The first gate we're going to talk about on page number 41 is the inverter or the not gate. There's eight gates. This is the first one. If you take a look here on the lecture notes, I'll just draw it down here. The symbol for the inverter, there's two symbols. You can either draw it this way or you can draw it this way. You can put the bubble on the input. Sometimes the engineer draws it this way with a bubble on the output, and sometimes the engineer draws it this way with a bubble on the input. They both perform the same function. If this is at input A, this output X is going to be equal to A bar. Some textbooks show it as A prime. But we're not going to use that representation. We're going to use the bar above it. If, if this is an A bar, coming in, the output x in this gate is equal to a barred inverted. That bubble inverts it. That bubble means you put a bar above it. The bubble here means you put a bar above it. That's all. It makes no difference whether you do it before the signal goes into the gate or after the signal is coming out of the gate. And a barred barred, if you take a look at one of the laws we have, it's a law, um, it's a law we'll discuss, but a barred barred is back to a. So if this is A barred, this is A. It's an inversion. The truth table for the inverter, it has one input. Okay. It has one output. Inputs and outputs are separated by a vertical line. You have an input 0, the output's going to be a 1. You have an input 1, the output's going to be a 0. That's the truth table for, for the inverter. Signatures. As a design engineer we talked about signatures all the time. A signature is just a signal name. We name, we in digital electronics when you're doing design you name wires. You give wires names based on their function. So when I talk about a signature I'm talking about a a signal name. So let's see how it works. First example I have here. Um, we have a, a signal and the signal is up and it goes into an inverter. I'm not drawing this very well, but it goes into an inverter. The output's not down. The output's not down. The output is up barred. Now, I'm going to talk about high active signatures and low active signatures. This is the simple rule. If you see a signature name and there's no line above it, it's referred to as a high active signature. If you see a signature name and you see a line above it, the line above it makes it a low active signature. So this is a high active signature and this is a low active signature. So let's say this is part of a schematic, this is part of a circuit in a schematic. And you're troubleshooting this circuit. And you have a zero logic level coming in right here. Well, this is a high active signature. And that's a, low sig that's a low logic level. So it's inactive. Nothing's going up. It might be gone down or it might be standing still. If this is a zero, this is a one. Whatever, whatever story it tells on this side, it should tell you the same story here. This is a high active signature. The line is zero. You're not going up. This is a low active signature. So when this line is low, you're going up. Well, it's not low. It's high. So you're not going up. You're not going up here. You're not going up here. This is called the inactive state. What if there's a 1 here? Well, 
a tr technician will look at this and say, this is a high active signature. A one means something better be gone up. Whatever this signal's driving, the, 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 a flag, the, the flag better be gone up the pole. The elevator better be gone up. And if you have a z one here and you, you go through an inverter, you get a zero here. This is a low active signature and the signal's low, something better be gone up. The story says something better be gone up here and says something better be gone up here. What if you have a one here? That says something's gone up and you have a zero. That's an error signal. Okay, well, I'm sorry. And you have a one here. Sorry about that. You have a one there. If you have a one here, you're gone up. And it's telling you something Something better be gone up. The elevator's moving upward. Over here, it's a low active signature, but you have a one, which means you're not going up. Well, obviously, something's not working here because this is an inverter. If this is a one, this has to be a zero. So that's an air signal. Just like if you have a zero here and you have a zero there, that's an air signal too. They tell two different stories. A zero here says you're not going up, and a zero here says you're going up. So if you take a look at page 41, uh, I also showed this in terms of on signal, of on. If you're turning, for instance, uh, let's say you're going to turn a motor on. Say you're going to turn a motor on, and you want to have this signal called on, and you want to have this called not off. Inexperienced engineers will try to make the logic English in their minds, and it doesn't work. Um, you want to call this on bar. It's gone through an inverter. So if this is a zero, this is a high active signature. If this is a zero, the motor's not on. So let's see if it tells the same story on the output. A zero here should put a produce a one here. That's a low active signature, and the signal's opposite. It's high, so it's not on. That's the inactive state. It's, it's a proper state, but the motor shouldn't be on in that case. And this, what if you have a one here? High active signature. This tells you if the, if the, if the signal's high, that motor better be on. Well, if you have a one here and you have a zero there, it's a low active signature. It's low. So this is the active. This is the inactive condition. And this is the active. How about the air signals? A zero here and a zero there, or a one there and a one there. They tell two different stories, input and output. On page 42, troubleshooting inverters. Let's take a quick look at this. Hope you'll be able to follow with me. Um, here we have normal operation. Ready bar is equal to zero. Notice what we're trying to do here is we all, the engineers always match the low active signature to the bubbles. If, if you looked on the previous page here, um, notice that hi, high active signature, I didn't draw the bubble there. A low active signature, the bubble goes here, so I, I drew the gate that way. Same thing down here. Here's a high active signature on. It's a high active input. There's no bubble. It means it's a high active input. I match them up. Here's a low active output, and there's a low active signature. You always try to match those up. It's real easy to do when you do your design, and it makes it easier for the technicians to understand when they're troubleshooting. Look here, ready. This is going to say, like, this is a signal that's being generated here. It's telling us that the printer is ready to receive data. So the normal operation, active, is ready equals zero. The printer's ready. Notice I'm, I, I match the low active signature with the bubble, so I'm drawing the inverter this way. And on the output, you get ready, bar, bar. We already know that ready, bar, bar is just ready. You're back to ready. And it's equal to 1. So you're ready here, low active. You're ready here, you're high active. Everything's normal operation. The abnormal operation would be if you have a 0 here, matching the low active signature, and you're in the circuit, the, 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 pr the printer's ready to receive data. Okay. But out here, ready is equal to zero. How can you get a zero here and a zero there if it's gone through an inverter? You can't. So that's an abnormal operation. Here we have another example, air and air bar. This is air, high active signature, matched with the high active input. This is a low active output, matched with the low active signal. Here's your normal inactive operation. Here's your normal active operation. Here's your abnormal, and here's your abnormal. Um, we're going to talk about the 7405 hex inverter IC. There are six of these come in a package. You don't get one in an integrated circuit. And I think we looked at that, you know, we, or we will in the first lab. But if you look on page 275 of your specs, you'll see what I'm talking about there, um, the way these are designed. 
the way they're designed, it's a 7404 package, and we'll get to know those very well. But here's the integrated circuit. See if I can't give you an idea of the integrated circuit. Little dimple right there makes this pin 1 and pin 2 and pin 3 and pin 4 and pin 5 and pin 6 and pin 7. Then here's pin 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Here's pin 14. It's a 14 pin package. These inverters get placed in here like this. There's one inverter, two inverter, three inverter, four inverter, five inverter, six inverter. There's six different inverters that go into this package. Pin 14 is usually the, is, on most of these integrated circuits, you, if you notice in the specification, pin 14 is VCC. It's your plus 5 volts that biases this up, and pin 7 is your ground. So we're going to be taking pin 14 to plus 5 volts, VCC, and we're going to be taking pin, pin 7 is going to go to ground, and pin 14 is going to go to VCC, which is 5 volts. And then there's six of these in the package. That's why it's called a hex for six inverter package. Hex inverter. It's called a 7404 package. We'll be using that a lot. And then finally, on page 43, I want to show you a quick application of the uh, another application. We've been looking at applications the whole way along here, but I want to look at uh, application example 31, figure 312 here. If you take a look, um, I, I wrote I wrote here on the signatures. I wrote some signatures in. Uh, the author had not pressed here, but what I'm going to show you is that the input signature is called pressed. It's high active. It's high true. And the output is pressed bar. So if you do not press that button, that pressed input is a zero. It goes through the resistor. It's, it's called being pulled down the ground. What happens is, let me see if I can't point this out. If, you, if this button isn't pushed here, this signal gets pulled to ground, so you have a zero here. A zero here gives you a one here, and that's the inactive state for this circuit. But when you press this button, when you press the button, the five volts is a logical level one. Remember, five volts is a one. That logical level one makes the pressed, the, the high true pressed signal active because it's high true, and there's a one on there. And then you get a zero on the output, and a zero on the output tells you that something's pressed. The story on the input with a 1, high true, something's pressed. That's when you press this button. And then the, as long as you have the button in, a 1 here will give you a 0 here, and it tells the story on both sides. That's the end of this lecture.